Peace and love, party people in the place to be. How you feeling? I am Talib Kweli, the BKMC, the MCEO. I'm coming to you live from New York City for another fantastic edition of the world's best podcast, The People's Party. I got my lovely and talented and beautiful and thoughtful and thought-provoking co-host, Jasmine Lee, coming straight from Los Angeles. How you doing, Jasmine? You know what? I'm doing amazing, and I know you guys <laughs> can't see me right now, but I got on my gator boots. You got on your gator boots? In my mind. <laughs> Do you got on a Gucci suit as well? Is that Gucci? Yes. This okay. is all Gucci in my mind. Okay, cool. Because you, uh, uh, we're doing big things today. We have a, a big time guest today. And your outfit is representative of this guest. Um, our guest today <laughs> is one of the uh, icon of hip hop. Somebody who um, I greatly admire for his contributions to the culture. Um, beyond his contributions to the culture, though, which can be quantified, by his currency in the culture, he has also had one of the most incredible 10 year runs of any producer of all time. From 1998 to 2008, 22 singles on Billboard Hot 100, 17 gold platinum and double platinum albums as the in-house producer for Cash Money Records. He is the architect for that sound. Without this man, there is no cash money in my opinion. And without this man, New Orleans hip hop is not on the map the way it was. He took his influence, the way he was inspired by New Orleans second line music, bounce, jazz, all that, and put it into his hip hop. Um, I can't even, if look, if I start to read the hit records that this man did, that, that'll be the whole show. There'll be no interview. Uh, but I'm gonna name a couple of them. Um, a couple of my favorites T.I. Top Back, uh, BG, Cash Money is an Army, Lil Wango, DJ, BG's B, uh, Bling Bling. Of course, the, as Charlemagne the God called, uh, Negro spiritual, back that ass up. Um, <laughs> he got five albums as one half of the big timers with Birdman. Um, two solo albums. Ladies and gentlemen, we talking about a man who has left his footprint, his handprints, every every kind of print ever on New Orleans hip hop, Southern hip hop, the whole goddamn global hip hop scene. A hit maker, a game changer, a seventh ward representative. Elvis Freshly, Manny Glover, Manny Davis Jr., aka Manny Fresh in the motherfucking house. Give it up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, bro. That was epic. I love that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Man. Thank you. I was gonna do the fresh. I was, but I was like, I'm gonna let Manny do that when he feel like he. I didn't know I had that many gold and platinum songs. Goddamn. Hey, I'm gonna have to give me a lawyer or something. Hey man, you know we gotta be like, I'm, you gonna start tweeting like Kanye West, like y'all yeah, about to run up on Universal. <laughs> exactly, 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 bro. Pour it up. Um, how you holding up in the pandemic in the lockdown? I'm good. I'm good, dude. Um, the blessing is this: I own all my music. You know what I'm yes, saying? Indeed. So yes, these indeed. are times when that right there makes the difference. Like you know what I'm saying? Because um, just the impact that those songs had on people. That's when that check mm -hmm. counts. Like, you know what That's I'm right. saying? And I'm glad I never was somebody who gave up, you know, the publishing or sold it or none of that. Like, you know, so right now, and just even see the young people embrace Manny Fresh music and, mm -hmm. and, and what's going on. It's crazy with me. Well, we're going to talk about how you and your crew uh, revolutionized the business and help artists to see their own value and their own worth. Um, but in this pandemic, you've been doing something very inter interesting on your Instagram. Um, you've been doing a... Uh, a, a virus killer series tell me about that yeah yeah so my dj set virus killers is kind of like mm -hmm. just to let you um get a second like you know I, i'll probably do three hours you know and just mm -hmm. to get you away from life like you know like to mm -hmm. escape from everything that's going on so that's why i call it virus killers like you know it's it, it's basically like to kill everything that's going on with this virus and and all the crazy shit or whatever that's going on in the right. world for three hours of your life, like it's DJ Manny Fresh going ham. Your favorite songs yes. that you love, like the favorite songs yeah. that you grew up on and all of that. Yeah. But you're not just doing that on um with the virus killers, you're also doing something on Sundays with some gospel music on iTunes. Yeah. Sundays is gospel get down. Like, okay. you know, I'm 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 Southern, bro. Like, you know, yes. my stepdad is a pastor, my mom okay. is a first lady, and she's stern. She is stern. So it's just kind of like you you gotta, you know, you you know those songs. You grew up that mm -hmm. way. So it's just my way of giving back, of saying like, hey, 
These are the songs that I grew up on, the new and the old. So, you know, like we, we that way, you know, and That's I right. think all black people are that way. We'll go out Friday and yeah. Saturday and Sunday. We'll be in church smelling like alcohol. Church. Yeah. <laughs> reeking of weed, all of that. But we in there on Sunday. That's you right. know what I'm That's saying? Right. So we, we just giving love and giving back. So on Sundays, that's my way of giving back. Well, music has always been the way that New Orleans is giving back to the world. Um, New Orleans is the most important city in black music, which actually makes it the most important city in music, period. So yeah. tell me about growing up in New Orleans as a musician when that's all you know. And when did you realize that everyone doesn't grow up with the same uh, rich musical history as people from New Orleans grew up with? Gifts, your gifts, mm. your gifts going to be different from other people's gifts. You know, your birthday, you might get a bike in New Orleans. You get a okay. drum set, you get a mm. you get a guitar, you get, you know, <laughs> yeah. like for your birthday and for Christmas, you're going to get something that's like, you know, that's that's bi- that's built on instrumentation. It's built on mm-hmm. like this is how we grow up. So mm-hmm. I realized early on, like, you know, like we not like everybody else because, you know, mm-hmm. I have friends in other places. That was just like, well, damn, like, why your dad so... He, I don't think he was hard. He was just on, like, this is what I see in you. Right. You know, like, what? why somebody else is getting a bike, you getting a drum set. Like, you mm-hmm. know, and because it's, it's that's the way we grow up. On every corner in New Orleans is a band. There's some kids who, yeah. they, you know, like, that's, that's where they invested in. They might not go to school, yeah. they might not, but they know how to play music. Jazz, you gotta you know, go, you gotta see what he's talking about, to visualize yeah. Yeah, you gotta really visualize. Do. You got, you gotta live the dream, like you know. So, like, like literally, like on every corner is some kids, some some young kids starting a band, like mm-hmm. a five piece band, that's like right. you know, that's a jazz band. That's just like you know what? I got a horn. Somebody gave me a drum. Somebody gave this kid a tuba. Somebody, you know what I'm saying? And they trying to outdo the block that's two blocks up because they they block starting the band too. So it's mm-hmm. big to us to you know, like you gotta know instrumentation. You ain't gotta learn. Like, you know, and we play from the heart. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to learn music theory. You play from your soul, you play from your heart, but you're going to learn how to play that instrument. Word. Uh, another thing, what I really loved about New Orleans, and you can uh, correct me if this is incorrect, uh, you can start a parade, right? You can, yeah. anybody can just go and just say, <laughs> I want to do a parade yeah, on this listen, given day. <laughs> listen, yeah. I'm from the Seven Wall. We got this thing called the Seven Wall Splash. Seven Wall Splash means like a DJ come out there, and it's like two little bitty pools, like some little pools you bought from Walmart, the little small pools. And, yeah. you know, and before you know it, it's like 20 people, then 30 people, then 40 people, 50 people. Now it's some water guns. Now it's all of that. Now we got a <laughs> wow. splash and we got a DJ out there. And that's how a splash gets started. Like, it's wow. just the DJ. It's just the element of, you know, like other places like, you know, you, you've seen in Chicago or whatever, where it's a fire hydrant, where they might let the mm-hmm. water run mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, our theme is, like, nah, we just, that's all we need is just, like, a little water and some DJ. And and, and what's weird, New Orleans actually don't call a block party a block party. We call it a DJ because it's all DJ. about the DJ. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. like, you going to the DJ today? You going to the wow. DJ? You know, you going so to the, the DJ. DJ. becomes the DJ becomes like ubiquitous to the situation. Yeah, it's crazy. the DJ is the hero. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's all about the DJ. Like, it's not even considered a party. It's called the DJ. If it's an outside event, it's called a hmm. DJ. They're like, you going to the DJ? <laughs> now, now that's that's real interesting when we talk about you because you made this record uh, go DJ twice, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we'll talk about, we're going to we're gonna hold, we're gonna hold off on that because your pops... Uh, famous DJ in the New Orleans area. But before we talk about your pops, um, your mom's was a teacher, right? Yeah. My mom's a teacher too. Common's mom's a teacher. Kanye's mom is a teacher. There's like a long legacy of uh, rappers who are the kids of teachers. Um, yeah. How did your mother being a teacher shape your approach to your career and your craft? Um, it, it, It's even earlier than that. I saw my mm. mom do so many things. Like I saw her um, evolve into that. Like, you know, mm. It's like growing up where you see your mom, okay, you're cleaning houses. You know, you're doing this and da 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 But my mom always wanted greatness. You know, mm. she always wanted, you know, it was like, you have to read. You have to do this. While my, my friends was doing other things where, okay, if you ain't got nothing to do, and you know this, if your mom is a teacher or something, mm-hmm. or, or, or just an educator or whatever, if you ain't got nothing to do, they're they, they going to find something for you to do. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, you ain't got nothing to do. Well, read yeah. a book. 
Read the yeah. encyclopedias A through yeah. Z. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Write an essay. They're going to find something for you to do. But I didn't, I, you know, I didn't see the importance of that. But mm-hmm. like I said, that, that was part of what shaped me. And us growing up in public housing, we was one of the first families to have encyclopedias. Mm. So I got it early that what was important about encyclopedias because other kids had to come and borrow books from us when you was doing mm. an essay or something like that. Like, you know, mm. and it would be a big deal if the B book was missing and you had to do something. You're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, the damn, yeah. where, where's the B book? Like you might use it to balance the table or something. Yes, yes. <laughs> So, so I got like early on what education mm-hmm. meant, like, you know, and my mom got it too, because part of me and even development of our neighborhood was because of that. It wasn't just me. I just saw the importance of what my mom did in our neighborhood because, you know, you, you got kids that's growing up and she's like, well, you got to tell them better in order for them mm-hmm. to do better. Yes. Or you got to show them yes. better for them to do better. If you got in mm-hmm. trouble in our neighborhood, you lived with us. Mm. To this day, everybody in New Orleans could tell you this. You lived with us. If mm. something happened, if if your mom shot your dad and it was kids or whatever, them kids came mm. live with us. Mm. Like, you know, my mom was that type of person. Like, you know, and on top of that, she also educated them. Mm. My first experience was I kind of disliked it because somebody was always in our spot. But at mm-hmm. the same time, I realized that this was something special and it was rubbing mm. off on me. Mm, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now your pop's name rang bells in the New Orleans yeah. music scene. A uh, DJ Sabu, right? Yeah. My dad was like this crazy street, street legend in New Orleans, dude. Yeah. Before I knew Juvenile, my dad knew him. Mm, my dad crazy. used to let Juvie rap rap on the mic, like you know what I'm saying. And and Juvie's first nickname, that's his family name, is Tanook. Like you know what I'm saying. Like <laughs> and. My dad used to always make like hey, is this kid to nut. Like you, you need <laughs> to know him. Yeah, you need to know him. And I'm just like, mm, I don't know. Like, and 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 this this is what's crazy. So mm-hmm. Juvie had been doing back that ass up way before I even met him. Wow. I just wow. polished the song up and, and 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 you know and did my thing to it. But he was doing it on my dad's sets. Wow. And my dad was always telling me, like, it's this, this, you know, and the crazy thing. When Juvie actually realized that was my dad, he was just like, bro, I didn't even know that was your dad. I grew up on your dad. You used to always <laughs> let me rock the mic. Like, <laughs> right. Sound like so your dad had was, a very good ear. Right. Yeah, yes, yes. All the time, dude. And and a crazy following. A crazy, crazy following. And and you know, when, when you're a DJ, and let's just say this, you got a crazy following. It's still mm-hmm. older people in New Orleans that still, like, you will never be your dad. You all right, but you ain't your dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's, dope. that's, his, that's what he, you know, did. He mm-hmm. made that yeah. movement. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I remember young, my dad used to let me hook up his equipment. And one time I had to just stay because I couldn't get home in time or whatever. Whatever was going on, I had to stay mm-hmm. at the gig. I used to mm-hmm. go hook up his equipment. And so this is the first time I actually saw my dad DJ. I used to just hook up the equipment. The first time I saw him DJ, when I actually saw what a DJ does mm-hmm. to the crowd and what, you know, I, I guess what how people feel about, you know, the interactions. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. this is what I'm going to do. Yes. This is this is where I'm supposed to be. I just sat back and watched and was just like, wow, like this is incredible. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. knew right then and there, like it, it just kind of happened on, just like I said, I, 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 set up my dad equipment and I don't know, for some crazy reason, I couldn't go home or whatever. So I had to wait now. And I'm in this smoky hole in the wall bar or whatever. And I'm watching him DJ, but I'm seeing how people interacting and what the music do and what a DJ actually does. And I knew right then and there, I'm like, this is what I'm supposed to do. We talked to DJ Clark Kent last week and he was all, he also went from hip hop DJ to producer is that like a natural transition because you understand certain building blocks of songs so well? Yeah, mm-hmm. I never even, listen, I have never even considered myself as a producer. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. a DJ. Like, you know, the I guess that evolved into, nah, you're a producer. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I always did it from a DJ perspective. I started liking, you know, like making beats and the, the, the things that, okay, like, I just want to be better than the next DJ. That was my whole 
I guess me involving me evolving into making beats. I'm like, okay, everybody's scratching, everybody did it. So the next um thing to me would be like make beats. Like start making mm-hmm. beats. And my dad was big on drum machines. So we had all the old school stuff. We had Moog um keyboards, we had the 808 rolling and all of that. So mm-hmm. my dad would just leave that sitting around. So I started learning how to program and da da da. So if if I sucked at a DJ gig, I knew this. I was good at playing music. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and sometimes when you're growing up, you suck. You, 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 that's, that's, that's you growing yeah. up. You're not that yep. good. So I was okay. like, you know how I'm going to win? I got y'all on the drum machine. I got y'all on the keyboard. So my, yeah. my, my big thing would be like, okay, if I'm losing this tonight, I'm, I'm going to hit y'all with the 808. Y'all know what right. it sounds like, but nobody ain't got an 808. I got an 808. Right. <laughs> so... Right. So it started evolving into me doing um, my own thing. The first thing I did was mimic stuff. I used to mimic Mantronics all the time. Mm, wow, what a good group. I would copy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If you listen to Manny Fresh, you could tell, like, you know. Mantronics, like, okay. Mantronics. Mantronics, yeah. hands down, like, my hero. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You ever seen that film, um, uh, The History of 808s, the documentary? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. I did, yeah. Yes, I did. And, you know, and Mantronics has always been one of my heroes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and it, it, Mantronics has always been big in New Orleans. Like, mm-hmm. and, I, and, and I got a chance to actually talk to him. And, you know, he really didn't even, I was like, bro, you are huge in New Orleans. Right. You know, you know, because but that's the music Southern that, rap in general. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he was a 909, 808 dude. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and even he was editing crazy before editing happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? Before anybody, like if you listen to a lot of the songs right now, rap songs, they all mm-hmm. kind of came from that era of how music was. Like, you know, where, where you mm-hmm. had these crazy edits and you had these crazy bounce offs and the um, triplets and all of that. All of the triplets mm-hmm. that I do with, 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 with my hi-hat rolls and all of that, you know, that's courtesy of Mantronics. And I think we got to mm-hmm. give back to people where you got it from. You know, that's um, right. and... Flash, Furious Four, all of that, you know. And this this is where my old school come in. I'm a lot older than a lot of folks. Like, you know what I'm saying? I grew up in the in the golden age. I mean, not the golden age, the, the early age of hip hop. You know, mm-hmm. I grew up, I grew up like listening to those records because that was the records that my dad was playing. My dad yeah. was playing the Furious Four. He was playing Grandmaster Flash. He was playing Good Time Chic. Like that was the songs yeah. that I grew up on. So yeah, that's 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 my element of where it comes from. Yeah, I've heard you talk about the influence of Good Time Chic and how that record Im- impacted you and having two copies of that record. Um, but I think yeah. that's a part of your story that gets lost in the sauce because Cash Money became so big and your sound became you know so so specific to what Manny Fresh does that I mm-hmm. think that yeah. people who don't really pay attention to the production or pay attention to you know to how the sausage gets made, they don't understand and see the connection with you and old school hip hop that come from New York City. I, I exactly. see the direct connection of where it co- comes from, what was happening in New York, and then what was going on. And, you know, even in those first records you did with Gregory D. Um, yeah. You know, when I when I hear those records, uh, it sounds like, okay, these are New Orleans cats because y'all rapping about each ward, you rapping about what's happening, you shouting out blocks and neighborhoods, but the feel of it was like, we're showing you our version of hip hop. But I feel like New Orleans also was able to give us a new perspective on it uh, because of the influence of people like Alan Toussaint. And that's where you recorded their yeah. that first demo tape, right? Yeah, at, at C Saint. That was Alan's mm. home studio. That's, that was the first demo that we did, you know, and, and it went crazy. But one of the great things that I love about New Orleans, besides us doing our thing, we have always accepted everybody. Like yeah. New Orleans is the place where East Coast, West Coast, all um, Miami base, all of that gets played. Like, you know, mm-hmm. and that's that's what made it a cool hip hop spot, because it wasn't like like, you know, like if you if you grew up on the East Coast, you only played East Coast. If you grew up on the West Coast, you only played West Coast. In New Orleans, nah, we played everything. We loved yeah. everything. We yeah. accepted everything. Even in, in the thing that you said, the movie, the 808 thing, they was just like, well, you know, the first thing that people knew me from was there was like I was a Miami bass producer. I wasn't mm-hmm. really a Miami bass producer. It was just that that's what we was growing up on. Right. So, you know, we grew up on the 808. So naturally, we, we you know, we went to the 808. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. I, I just feel like 
that was but but it was it was something about that sound that made down south go ooh wow that boom yeah. like you know what i'm saying yeah. and but yeah. it's so many like i guess instrumental songs that came from the east coast the west coast and all of that that was 808 songs that had an impact that was in new orleans that was crazy cuz if you grew up in new orleans in the 80s anything like the show boys part of what bounce is you know like bounce is the songs the, the the drag rap songs, these guys came from Queens, New York. It had an 808 break mm-hmm. in it. And we just start, I flipped the song over and start playing a break beat in it. And, and that's the essence of hip hop when it's call and response, when it's just an MC and it's just two yeah. beats. And that was that was that was yeah. how Bounce got started. Bounce got started on it's call and response, the same way hip hop got started. It was like, hey, find some cool break mm-hmm. beats and let's see who could rock the party the best. And that's really right. what bounce is. Bounce is really like you know, like okay, we we got three MCs and we got a DJ that's crazy as shit, and he got the coolest break beats, and he gonna go off, and y'all gotta rock the party. And that's mm-hmm. what makes us feel good about hip hop when it's that raw, when it's that like oh wow, like right. there's no special effects, no yeah, added preservatives. Yeah, it's organic. You gotta go out there and rock. You started a group called New York Incorporated with Mia X, Denny D, and his cousin DJ Watt. Yeah. First of all, Denny, how did a group well, with Denny only started the group. one? Denny, Denny started the group. Oh. He was from New York. It was one, of, you know, my homie from New York. Oh. And so that's why happened, it was called New York Incorporated then. Yeah, that's why it was called New York Incorporated. It was already in existence, but it was one of the hottest groups in the world, like, you know, to me, that came to New Orleans. Denny and them migrated from New York, him and his brother, to New Orleans. But Denny was already transforming. He was already doing wild, crazy shit on the turntables that I never saw. So I was just like, oh, yeah, I, I got to do this. I got to get with these dudes. So they, you know, okay. they, they mm. just saw me as like, OK, like the younger me was the turntable battle dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? But we, we never mm. knew what transforming was and all of that. When Denny came along, he changed the game. We was just like, oh, yeah, right. this is the hottest crew. So I and I look at him as my mentor in DJing because, like, you know, I knew some things. Like like I said, my dad, to me, was the greatest person in the world. But my dad's era of it was kind of like how Flash grew up. It was just the backspin and the break beats. Mm-hmm. Denny was more of the, the techniques, like the style and all of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the flair. The like, you know what I'm saying? You got to have your timing together yeah. and all of that. So that's what made me join New York Incorporated. And my 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 best friend Wop Denny was his cousin, so it was right. natural like that we did it. And Mia lived right across the street from us, and she was a nice MC. So it was like if, if I go, everybody she got cold blooded. <laughs> yeah. yeah, shout out to Mia. X. She definitely cold with it. Um, yeah, we now you um are friends with Trombone Shorty. Um, yes, I've heard I've heard you recorded with the. Uh, Preservation Hall Jazz Band. Whenever I come to New Orleans, it doesn't mean you know I, I'm in New Orleans uh, for Jazz Fest sometimes, or just for on my regular one too. I've seen you at the House of Blues. It don't matter if it's a bounce party at, at the House of Blues or a jazz concert. I've seen you there. And, yeah. Um, you talked about the eight of weights, you know, and and the, the, how you started out in bounce, um, especially with that those records you were doing, Gregory D and all these early records you were adding the second line sound and that jazz influence to the hip hop. Can you maybe talk to me about some of your favorite New Orleans jazz artists? Troy by, by far trombone shorty. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We've been, listen, I, I've been knowing him since a kid. He played on some yeah. of the earlier cash money songs. Like, yeah. and, and the only thing he wanted as a kid was some, some tickets to a wrestling match. <laughs> Heaven is his, his best friend, Charlie. <laughs> like they, they was crazy like wrestling fans. They thought wrestling was real. <laughs> That's all you had right. to do was give him some, some tickets to it a wrestling real. match. It's not. <laughs> Sorry, not, Jasmine. Jasmine I'm sure don't, mess up my, don't mess up my good day. <laughs> wrestling is real. Yeah, it's a real okay. skill. It's a real skill. <laughs> it's a real skill. <laughs> to know how to Definitely take the hits skill. and know how to fall and all that. Yeah. It's real. So so <laughs> Troy, you know, that's that's Trombone Shorty's real name. Troy used to just come play just for tickets. He was like, man, just give me some tickets to the wrestling match and I'll, <laughs> I'll come play, whatever whatever you want me to do. So, like, our relationship is crazy because to see him do that into this super mega star that he is right now, 
That's mm-hmm. crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? To say like, hey, I watched this dude as a kid, like grow mm-hmm. up. And now he is incredible. Like, you know, well-respected. I mean, like world-renowned trombone mm-hmm. shorty. That's right. And, and and on top of that, I'm always open to learn something. And Troy is that mm-hmm. dude. He, you know, he'll tell you like, nah, that, that what you just done, you made that shit up. That don't, that don't make no sense. <laughs> so some of my stuff is cool, but some of it is like, you know, when you got when you got somebody who's like he grew up on, he actually knows music theory. Mm-hmm. My theory is I make up chords. I do that. And he's yeah. like, well, try this. That's hip-hop. Try this. That's really yeah, that's hip hop. Exactly. Punk rock. And so. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes um, my mistakes, he will correct them. And, and it's a great thing. But sometimes my mistakes are great. But sometimes mm-hmm. you need that person in the room, too, to say, well, try this. That's He's right. that little brother that's like, hey, bro, like, try this. And you just like, oh, that fits so much better. Because I was trying to figure it out. It would have took me 10 hours when you did it in three minutes. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that system about New Orleans because you can always call little brother, big brother, whoever you need to say, like, mm-hmm. hey, bro, I'm working on something. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I'm going to send it to you. Y'all, y'all figure mm-hmm. it out and send it back to me. And that's, mm. that's trombone shorty. Mm. Where is Bond? Cool. Uh, you've worked with Big Frida, Queen of Bounce. And actually, yeah. thanks to Talib, I got to see her uh, perform in person. Oh, that's right. We when went to I was that backstage. Show. Oh, it was, it was, it was amazing. I wanted to go out there and uh, twerk a little bit, but I wasn't wearing the right shoes. So I stayed where I was at. <laughs> Didn't want to fall. Uh, <laughs> Didn't want to embarrass myself. Um, how did it feel to link up with her for Dive? And is that full length um, and, is, and is that full length collab album still happening? Yeah, it's happening. You know what I'm saying? This is what's crazy. This is what I want to get away from. And I'm going to say it. I hate record companies. I hate them mm-hmm. because they slow down progress. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. they slow down everything. This, this album mm-hmm. has been done. Like, and, and I'm this dude. If I hear something five times, I don't like it no more. I know that's crazy because you no, didn't that's hear how it. most great producers are. But but that's, but yeah. when I hear it five times, I don't like it. I know the world, you know, like they they ain't heard it yet. But to me, I'm just like, well, it was supposed to come out last year. Like, why are we sitting right. on it? Right. So I'm kind of I'm, I'm so I, I, that's where I'm at. And, and Frida brings so much energy and so much love to the city and everything. Like you know, if you if you got a chance to see Frida perform. Like, you see how people go crazy over this shit. And what I even love about my spot in hip-hop and where I'm at and where I'm from and all of that, we don't do genres. We don't do none of that. We do music. Uh We don't care where you come from, what color you are, you know, none of that. Whatever is going on with you, do good music, and that's that's, that's what we going to do. Yeah. Shout out to the Soul Rebels. They put me on stage with Freedom for the first time. Um, and yeah, then, I, I like when you could tell when when Frida get on stage in a the city that's change. not New Orleans. The a city energy, that's not New Orleans, oh. pockets of New Orleans spring up. You see them like start to move. You see the room start to shift. The a energy like, change. Oh, there's New Orleans there. There's New Orleans there. <laughs> yeah, there's New Orleans there. you notice as an entertainer, you have done mm-hmm. parties sometimes with some people who you just like, fuck. How am I gonna go behind that? Mm-hmm. That's what Frida do. That's Frida right. is just like shit. Damn. Why? That's right. Why? That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? So yeah. the energy change anytime Frida show up. Like you know what I'm saying? You just like, yeah. damn. Like you better be on your A game because it's about to get crazy. That's exactly uh, right. But um, the beautiful yeah. thing of the beautiful thing about it is this: it's friendly competition, so it makes mm-hmm. you better. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right and, now, and, we don't, and when y'all come together, it's like forming like Voltron. Yeah. 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 And we don't and have that in hip hop no more. We need friendly competition. We need, mm-hmm. you know, like somebody's supposed to make you better. Somebody's supposed to make you on your A game. It's like me yeah. and you doing the album and you killed my beat. I'm just like, damn, I got to do better. Like, I can't yeah, let mm-hmm. you just kill my beat. And that's not you from gotta, a bad place. That's from a friendly competition place. Right. You have a very fierce uh, friendly competition streak. I've noticed yeah. throughout your career and throughout just the way you approach, the way you do the business, the way you do the art. Um, I want to. I'm gonna talk about that later too. Um, but I want to before we get into that. Um, tell me about meeting Baby and Slim. How did you meet them? How did you be, uh, become in-house producer for Cash Money? Um, just me DJing from uptown to downtown in New Orleans, and okay. I had a friend heavy. Um, I, I DJed me and KLC in this club in New Orleans, and KLC 
is like the head producer for No Limit. Mm-hmm. You know, he was beats by the pounds. But me and KLC mm-hmm. grew up DJing in this club called Rumors in New Orleans. And mm-hmm. Rumors was where it went down at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you got Manny Fresh, you got KLC. This is before we blew mm-hmm. up. But this was the essence of us blowing up, being hungry kids. Mm-hmm. So he did his thing. I did my thing. And, you know, he brung uptown. I brung downtown. So this was the spot where all of that met. Like, you know, and at the time, KL had just met Mystical. So okay. that was that was his project. You know, his mm-hmm. project was Mystical and Soldier Slim. You know, back in the G, it was Magnolia right. Slim. R.I.P. But yeah, R.I.P. So KLC, that was that was that was what he was working on. And um, mm-hmm. at the time, um, Magnolia Slim had this song that KLC had done. So when that would come on in the club, it was crazy. It was it was crazy when this shit would mm-hmm. drop. But I was still trying to find what my niche was. My niche was bounce music. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I had this set where I would kind of like stop and I had my SP-1200 and I would run these samples over Trigger Man. Trigger Man is the, mm-hmm. the song that came from Queens. The, the original right. name of the song was Drag Rap. We renamed the song to Trigger Man Trigger because Man. Right. that's what everybody in New Orleans used to call it, Trigger Man. Right. So I used to put all of these like R&B samples and all of that on top of Trigger Man. So my set was that way. So it was, I didn't know this was forming to be bounce. Mm. So early Cash Money, they had a rapper named Kilo G and it really didn't blow up. Kilo G was nice, but New Orleans was not like a rapper city. It was more of a, nah, you got to play us something ratchet. It's got to be, you know, it's got to have that beat behind it. So KLC was already established. Like I said, he was already doing Mystical. He was already doing Soldier Slim. Cash Money was like, well, how can we get on the map? I was like, well, this thing Bounce is taking off. One of their first artists was this kid, Lil Slim, and the song was called Bounce Slide Ride. I did the song in my kitchen and, you know, when when just me staying right up the street from the club. And it went from a four track in my kitchen, like what I said, with a Radio Shack mic, just a little tape and all of that <laughs> to, like, this is the start of Cash Money. You just gave us, man, um, a very unique necessary history of the start of your career, which is essentially the start of bounce music. And you connected yeah. a lot of dots for a lot of things. Now, for me as an East Coast dude, I remember hearing, go DJ, that's my but DJ, my but DJ. Not, not putting a, a yeah. face to a name. Like, just that's just a record that's out there. Another record that was out there, speaking of Mystical and speaking of UNLV, was Drag uh, Drag Him to the River. Now, I remember when yeah. that dropped, that beat, something about that beat, just me. I didn't know what. I didn't know it was a mystical diss. I didn't know who UNLV was. Never heard of no Manny Fresh. I just knew something about that. Doom, 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 doom. Something about that. I was like, so when Juvenile repurposed that, it made sense to me. It was like, oh, when Lil Wayne repurposed Go DJ, it made sense to me. So how does it feel knowing that the music you did so early in your career has such a huge influence over the future stars of New Orleans hip hop? That that was even a blessing to me. A lot of times, bro, like when, when Wayne even done that, mm-hmm. I kind of didn't want to do it because I was just like, well, that's already been done. I was right. like, it's been done. But he was right. like, nah, but you don't understand the impact. Right. He you was know, right. he was just like, you, yeah. He was like, you, you don't even understand the impact of he was like, I'm much younger than you, but this is what <laughs> we was doing. We grew right. up on this. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? And and I was just like, wow, that's crazy. So I'm like, okay, if you want to do it, let's do it. And the mm-hmm. same thing, Juvie, whole reason for signing with Cash Money was drag him from the river. Mm-hmm. He was like, I wanted that beat. I feel He was I like, feel. If, I, if I could meet him, I will do that. You know, and I was like, nah, you got it. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And, and and even the way the beat came, and I've always felt this way. When it's those beats that's like 10 minutes, mm-hmm. they always hit mm-hmm. with, with no thought process. Mm-hmm. I remember doing that beat in my kitchen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Same thing. Your drum machine on the counter and all of that kind of stuff. And... It was just like, damn, this this is just coming together. Like, you know, and when it was done, it was on a full track. And I just remember saying, nah, we got to go to a studio. It's got to mm-hmm. be a little bit clearer than this. It can't be this. Yeah. And and just taking that step to say, like, hey, we, we need to do it a little bit better. That made it even, you know, but, but when it came out, it was one of them songs where you couldn't go nowhere down south without that song playing. Yeah. That, that Mystical itself it. was even like... 
Mike himself was like, that shit made me like it. He was just like, you know what? He was like, I know it was a big shit song. about him on that, on that record. Yeah, too. he was like, but he was like, the beat was undeniable. Yeah. It was just. <laughs> word, word. But one of the lines was still out of the song Drag Rap. You know, mm-hmm. he just twisted the line. The song, you know, before, you know, because that's the essence of hip hop, you know, mm-hmm. drag him from the river, throw his body in Chuck Yard. It was a, the, the drag rap song was like drag him from the river on um, something, tell him bugs hard or something like that. Mm-hmm. He just, you know, changed it around. Mm, that's crazy. So the line came from the song drag rap. You know what right. I'm saying? The, the original, the song from Queens. He just changed it to, you know, drag him from the river. Right. Now, me coming from New York, I played a set of your music today on my IG Live. And of course, obviously, there's a lot of people that are into it. But me being a New York hip hop, rapidy rap, wordy rapper, obviously, I have some fans who are like, I don't like that cash money shit. I, I had some fans who was like, why are you playing this? Why are you playing this? And what's interesting about them saying it while I was playing a Juvenile record is the fact that when you first met Juvenile, he freestyled for you. And a lot of people don't understand that Juvenile is a real hip hop freestyle MC. So can you tell yeah. people that story? Yeah, like me meeting Juvie, like my dad had already knew him. My dad was already talking big about him. So um, Juvie was getting off from work and he's told his story a lot of times. Like, you know, and he was at a bus stop and, and, and he was right by the office where Cash Money was. Mm-hmm. And so they talking to him and I knew of him, mm-hmm. but, you know, didn't know none of his shit. So they put him on the spot and was like, just say, say some songs. He mm-hmm. he going through everything. So he was just like, just tell me a subject. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, shit. I'm just telling them subjects. I'm just saying anything. Cigarettes. So he just go like, you know, he's freestyling about cigarettes. Right. So then I'm like, okay, God damn it, cancer. He, sick, he, he go to freestyling about cancer. Wow. And I'm just like, bro, sign this dude. I'm mm-hmm. like, this dude is nice. And he did not stop. He wasn't a dude who, you know, how you get somebody and they might say four or five lines and they, and you know, and they cough up. Nah, it was like nonstop. I'm just like, damn, bro. I'm like, he nice. Right. You know, and, and the rest is history. I was just like, bro, I'm like, he's going to be y'all rapper. You know, I know you, y'all got the streets, y'all got this, da, 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 but I'm like, this dude right here is extra nice. Extra. extra and, you nice. know, and even when just me saying that, he was just like, well, I want to get with y'all for the dragon from the river beat. <laughs> from right. day one, he said it. He was right. just like, if I could use that beat over. And I'm like, yeah, bro, I He's got smart. You. He knew. He knew. Yeah. Yeah. And it took three albums, you know what I'm saying, for him yeah. to actually use it over. But he knew, from, you know, and he kept bothering me about it. He was like, bro, I told you why I was here for that beat. Right. You right, know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Word. And to this day, I think Juvie is one of the nicest, dude. Like, you He's know incredible. what I'm saying? He is. So yeah. What he did with Ha is me as an MC, me as a writer and an MC. I remember when that shit came out, it fucked my head up. I couldn't, I couldn't even, I didn't even know what to do. I was like, back to the drawing board. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Dang. Uh, I think Juvenile's amazing. And mainly, I really want to thank you and Juvenile for bringing back that thing up, which was back that thing up to me because I couldn't listen to curse words, songs with curse words back in the day. So I didn't listen to the back that ass up. I listened to back that thing up. And most times when I hear a song clean version, I never learn the dirty version. But this particular song, I made it my business to also learn the dirty version when I was an adult. Now, although that woman sexual, I mean, I, I, although that uh, song sexualizes women... <laughs> It has become a women's anthem. Like, if you're doing anything and you hear back that ass up, you have to stop and immediately report to the dance floor to take it over for the yeah. 99 to 2000. So, <laughs> any color, black, white, all it, of it. It does so not, it it's a woman's anthem. It is a woman's anthem. Yeah. Um, did you have any idea that women w- would connect to that song so deeply going on two decades later? Yeah, yeah. That's the one song my dad was even like, you know, he was, you know, like I had um songs like before that, and he was like, "Now nah, that's a song. That's oh. a goddamn song." You know, right. your dad is like, "That's that's the damn song right there." Right. Like, and even when we did it, like you know, the vibe in the room felt like I was like, "Yeah, this the shit. Like this the one." Like you know, and it was one of them songs where I was like, "Hey, if you do it this way, like you know, look at it this way." And you know, and I and I've said the story again. I was just like. 
how do you capture white, black, alien, and all of that? And I'm like, we gonna merge some classical music with 808. Mm. Like, you know, and I was just like, just let me figure out what's gonna be, you know, wow. and, and, and from the intro, when we, when we did it, like, you know, the room was like, shit, like, and when it dropped down, you know, like, this one of them times where you got maybe seven to eight people in the studio and it drops down and you got the dude that's got the corporate girlfriend and she cool and then it's just like, damn, she just lost her cool. Wow. <laughs> you can't help She's right. just in here twerking before twerking was even up. <laughs> and that's another thing uh, that I always say you could tell how old a, woman, a black woman is by the way she twerks. And watching that video, it's crazy <laughs> to see. It's the truth. It's the truth. Older Yay. women, it's different, it's different versions of twerkage. And that video had like, a, <laughs> now it's like an outdated version of twerkage. It's like a whole new, I think you guys should do it over. To be twerking honest. is twerking is a two point oh, yeah. now. It's, it's more scientific now. Yeah, yeah, I've upgraded it. Listen, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just degrees facts, as an Tell album him. need to be dropped again. Like that's another that's another record company issue. When mm -hmm. I'm just like, listen, this that's album needs to be yeah, it needs to be dropped again. Not just that one, so many other albums. Like you know what I'm saying? Because that's what we missing right now. Some of the young people in hip hop. Like that's why you're not getting these lessons because. You you know you you're not getting like what went into making this album like what mm -hmm. went in you know like and, and and even the second time of dropping it there's there's nothing wrong with giving you visuals and and the stories behind the songs and how it happened and you know and why it's still here yeah what they do with the rock albums that, when they've remastered and the, exactly know, yeah. exactly you know if, if we talk in rock and we talk in country these people are around for 15, 20 years. This is one of those albums that survived mm -hmm. like 15, 20 years. So why aren't we telling this story? Why aren't we telling like, you know, the younger generation, like this is the vibe of how we made this. And this is why it's that way. That's why we like, have you, you know, on this but, show. That's what the People's Party is about. Thank y'all. You called it thank the greatest love song ever written. Back yeah, that ass up. Back that ass up. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, this is the greatest love song ever written. <laughs> it definitely because gets the night it's, started. it's something that touch your soul. Yes. I, I've said as a DJ, if you failing, put this one on. Yeah. Yes, yes. I can, this I one can, don't get you. No I matter what. It's going to get you a yeah. few minutes till you figure out what... <laughs> yes! <laughs> right. And you know what's crazy about Back to That Stuff? I'm going to tell you just as me, because, you know, again, I'm a celebrity DJ. I'm more a selector. Like, if I get a blend right, I'm very excited. You know, people, people yeah, come yeah. to see me for my selection, you know, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you as I learned, I, I learned by putting myself in danger. I learned by putting myself in the club situation where I got, I'm, I might fail, I might succeed. I got to do it. And what you said about back that ass up is correct. And not only could you put it on at any crowd and win, but because of the way it comes in with the classical shit, you could drop it. You don't even have to drop it on time in the mix. If you, if exactly. you fuck up the blend, for back that ass up, it don't matter. The no. audience, the yeah, crowd is still going. Yeah, you just started going, from the intro. They, oh yeah. my it's important God. that the intro happens. Yeah. It's important that Who? the intro happens because yeah. it gives you, it gives, it was, like she said, it gives ladies that time to set up. Listen, now you're setting up. You're what? Just like, you got to oh, yeah, get just quick stretch in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who decided <laughs> to say, take it over for the 9-9 to 2000? And that, that's an iconic, like just, that, those couple of words, like when you, like the, that's said for so many different things like that. It, it was so big and it's like such a small thing to, to just add an, a small ad lib to add. I'm so excited. I can't even talk. That I'm was sorry. all juvie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you, but like I said, the song had been revamped like four or five times before I was just like, okay, this is the one like, you know, and, and, and that, that friendly competition made it a great song because we could have done it the first way and it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have worked. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Well, I was like, Hey bro, that ain't it. That's not it. Like, let's keep on going till we figure it out. When we figured it out, I was just like, this the one. This yeah. is it. Now, my DJ Spinelec, he, he is younger than me, um, but he rocks this shirt. That's for the, for the 9 9 and 2000s. And whenever he rocks that shirt, people get so excited when they see that on a T-shirt. Maybe he owes y'all some yeah. royalties. I don't know. Um, now, <laughs> another record that you produced that's not as big as uh, Back That Ass Up, but for the streets... It really represents something major. Is Cash Money is an army. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's one of yeah, my favorites by you. Um, can you talk to me about making that track with BG and what BG represents in the whole Cash Money universe? Well, I, I, I just figured this. And even writing songs and how I did it, I took on everybody's personality. BG mm -hmm. was the streets. 
Mm. BG wholeheartedly, hands down, was the streets. So you had to give BG street anthems. Yeah. Now, you know, that song was just like, hey, we're going to show y'all that we got something for everybody. You know, because um, the introduction to Cash Money, um, when we first actually did the deal, it was the big timers. And, you know, it didn't really yeah. go over well. But the big timers had already sold, you know, platinum. So when we got the deal with Universal, it was based off this album that we've done. When it actually got on a mainstream level, it was juvenile. You know, mm-hmm. when, when when 400 Degrees came out, everybody was paying attention. Then you get like, OK, well, maybe it's a fluke, you know, and we like, well, you know, because because, you know, juvenile was kind of looked at as he, he can rap. He is that. But they still a flashy ass record company. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. you know, so we like now nah, we got the street dude, too, for you. So when, when BG came along, it was just like, damn, they got a little bit of everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? He completely different from what Juvie do. Yeah. So that was that was even me going like, you have to establish yourself without, you know, coat telling him. You got to be mm-hmm. you. And you've always been the streets. So it, it that, that even opened up a whole different fan base for Cash Money. Because... Mm. You know, Juvie was kind of like, okay, that's when boppers kicked off. When it was just like, mm. it's getting flashy in hip hop. It's yeah. getting like, oh, he's the dude with the gold teeth. You know what I'm saying? And da da da. And girls like you, but y'all forgot about the streets. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So when 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 BG came, it was just like, oh shit, y'all got the streets. Y'all, you know. Right. So it was important that we had to establish all of that. Mm. Okay. Um, now we talked about BG. I want to talk a little bit about Lil Wayne. Um, what's interesting to me is Lil Wayne didn't start cursing until, you know, fuck the world record. It took him a long time. His his people yeah. w- was said that that he couldn't work with Cash Money unless he could do clean rap. And he's around street dudes, but he's 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 making these hit records. And I feel like as an MC, him being limited with his vocabulary, not being able to curse, it made him a better writer, made him mm-hmm. a better MC. I feel like also yeah. for you. Working with the SP twelve hundred, I've heard you talk about how you only had a limited amount of sounds. You only had eight sounds, and how yeah. having to only work with those eight sounds made you better. So, I would like you to speak to the people about learning how to work with what you got, because a lot of people think that you need to have or that you need to curse or you need to have all this equipment. Um, but you getting it out the mud. Yeah, like you know, all the early Cash Money songs was probably eight to maybe sixteen sounds because the mm-hmm. keyboard had eight sounds, the drum machine had eight sounds, nothing, mm-hmm. m- no more. But a mm-hmm. lot of the songs was just drum machine driven, like mm-hmm. straight out the SP twelve hundred. That's eight sounds. That's all you. That's all you could do. So mm-hmm. you you got to figure out how to make this something incredible, and and mm-hmm. I think that's the challenge. Like that made you better. When when it's unlimited, it's kind of mm. like damn. Now you you just like I got all of this shit. Mm. I just like hey, pick a kit and make make that work. Mm. Make that work. Like you you got to figure out how do you make this something great. And what was cool about Wayne when his dad passed away, that was one of the things that his dad required. He was just like, listen, if you're gonna do this, you know you can't be disrespectful to your mom. You can't do, you can't do this to your community or whatever because mm-hmm. you're much younger than these dudes. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to have you grow up faster than you're supposed to grow up. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you run with them, but it's certain things, and I think that made Wayne great because he was first one there, last one to leave. But he had to be super creative. He had to be in a you know like okay, damn, I just heard all of the shit that they said, and I gotta <laughs> come just as hard as them. But right. I can't express it that way. Mm-hmm. I, you know, and it's just like, well, you, you got to figure out a way. And it's powerful. Wayne would do rewrites on that wasn't hard enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still at the studio. He's still at the studio. He like, hey, bro, can I do my verse over? Everybody else gone. And I'm like, yeah, you could do it over. And his second time doing it over, I'm like, damn, you thought about this. Yeah. Like, you killed it. Like, the, the second time you've done it. Right, right. Because... He was on like, nah, they can't kill me on this song. They can't, you know, like that was what I just done was whack. And I know I could do better. And I heard everything that everybody else said. And I think he even used that energy to hear like, oh, I heard what y'all said. Now I'm going to use it against y'all and make my verse a little bit better. Right. Chestnut checkers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, bro, y'all don't get like why this dude is hanging around. And if, if, if you missed a spot if somebody ain't show up, Wayne was the, the dude in the back of the class going, I got my hand up. I got yes. that first. I got it. Right. I got it. Like yeah. he ain't here, he ain't here. I got it. I got yeah. something for it. That's that that's <laughs> that yeah, over energy, baby. 
Yeah. yeah. Revolutionary exactly is visionary. Is. It's 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 yeah. genius. It's genius. Now, you and Lil Wayne make magic together. Um, the people really want to hear you and Lil Wayne come with essentially a project, and on the card, you're listed as producer on 19 out of 21 tracks. That's like a project yeah. put you and him together. Um, mm-hmm. At what point was it when you worked at that? When you worked on the Carter, did you have a new level of respect for Wayne, or was it was it already there? Because I remember that's the era in which Wayne himself started declaring that he was the greatest rapper alive, and that was a controversial statement. He, some people in hip hop felt like he hadn't earned that, but even if you felt like he hadn't earned that, by the time he started working with you on that album. You couldn't really. That was a valid argument to be made at the time. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 even before we started the Carter, the conversation mm-hmm. happened in the club. We was mm-hmm. in Dallas, you know what I'm saying. And, and and I can tell you every every you know, I'm 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 kind of creepy like that where I can remember how shit happened <laughs> and you know and what we was talking right. about. And I was just like, we was in Dallas, and you know, and he was just like, bro, I'm going in a whole different direction. Like, fuck all of that kitty shit and all of that. I can really rap. Mm-hmm. So. I'm drinking in the club and I, I kind of dismissed it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he hit me in my chest. Like, you know, like, bro, I can fucking really rap. Do you hear me? Right. And I was just like, all right, bro, I hear you. And he was <laughs> like, so if we going to do this shit, you got to like, you got to bring it. Like, you mm. know, he was like, don't, don't fuck your childish ass beats. Like, and, I, and that's when he caught my attention. Ah, like I was like, like my childish beats. ass beats. <laughs> yeah, I was like my childish <laughs> ass beats. Like, <laughs> 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 and he was just like, I'm just telling you I'm on something mm-hmm. else. And he was like, yeah. you got to bring your A game, bro. And he was like, so we going to evolve. We going to evolve. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember him talking about everybody who left and all of that. And he was like, bro, I'm kind of like the last of the Mohicans. I'm here. You're here. So if we going to do something great, let's do it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, damn, I'm challenging you then. If you feel that way, like, let's let's go hard. I'm like, anything that you do, I promise you, bro, we going to go hard. Mm-hmm. So what I think what made the first Carter a classic was that we changed stuff. Like, you know, because we was in competition doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, like when we did the song, I'm like, I don't like that shit. And he came back the next day. He was like, that wasn't the beat I heard last night. And I'm like, yeah, because you beat my ass up on it <laughs> or vice versa. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? And he was like, bro, that beat was too hard to what I did. So I got to change the rap. So it was, you know, it was that that competitive, just being competitive about making it something cool. Mm, like, yeah. you know, and, and 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 that's what made it. And then me going like, holy shit, you are actually rapping. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because my early on thing with Wayne, I would have said, this is where Wayne fit in. Just the early Wayne. I would have been mm. like, Wayne is cool with metaphors and sound effects. Mm-hmm. You know, he got this 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 thing about him that makes people like him. But I wouldn't have said you graduated to MC. Mm. Right. But the Carter, I was like, yeah, you you MC. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because Wayne's biggest influence, Young, was Missy. You know, and, yeah. you know, in, in an interview he just did, he said Manny Fresh was just like, bro, well, God damn it, do the sound effects. Do what Missy doing. <laughs> and I did tell him right. that. You know what right. I'm saying? Because Missy's a, he Missy's had this. Goat. I get it. Yes. And he had this way with words, like, you know what I'm saying? But he had this way with sound effects, too. You know, and I was just like, well, look, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be the Missy of the Hot Boys. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But he graduated into his own by watching everybody else kind of like, well, y'all ain't really taking this shit as serious as I'm taking it. Yeah. I know you introduced the first one there. uh, uh, The the Dr. Carter record, I think Swiss Beats produced that. But that, for me, you know, I I liked the Carter one, two, three. I liked all of them. But that was for me. Personally, when I'm like, oh, he's not playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he's not playing. Like, he's dissected it down to where he could do a metaphor that lasts over a whole song, very accurate about the way that he sees he sees MC in the same way that a, a, a brain surgeon would see mm-hmm. yeah. a brain surgeon. Well, the cool thing, even this, Wayne said, bro, I learned this from you. I know how to pick out beats. I know how to pick out what fits my voice and what to do. He was like, when somebody else wasn't paying attention, I was paying attention. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why he did well without me. Like, you know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? Where he was just like, well, I still take, you know, I take this serious of how I pick songs and all Mm -hmm. of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then, well, somebody else, you know, a lot of times in hip hop, this this is what happens. If you in a deal and you're not with your support system, now mm-hmm. it becomes about money. 
Mm-hmm. It's like your next album is like, well, goddamn, who gonna pay me? And I'm like, well, you ain't paying attention to like this shit ain't touching nobody. It's now mm-hmm. you going, I need the bread, I need a yeah. hit. There is no such thing as a hit. Mm-hmm. There's good music. And and hopefully good music is gonna touch somebody. Mm-hmm. I can't be I, you you can't put me in the studio and say, give me a hit. I don't know how to give you a hit. I just know how good to do point. good music. Like, you good know point. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We there's no such thing as a hit. Songs become hits. Because they touch people. I don't think nobody's done a song and been like, this is the fucking hit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because well, maybe one, maybe after- Shaggy, it wasn't me. That's what <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I know right I'm just, I'm just fucking around. I'm just I'm, 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 I'm I mentioned that record because that was that was a record that wasn't a single, but they was trying to push another single. But that record just that's the one that people wanted. Yeah. So that but, became but what, the, what the hit was. My point being, it takes 10 more people after that song is even done to make it a hit. That's right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and you know, we, we could have a song and me and you think is incredible, but now we got to put it in somebody else's hands. Mm-hmm. They got to get it to the masses to make it a hit. If they don't achieve that, then it's yeah. not a hit. That's right. Science. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's like you, you got 10 more people that you got to count on to do their job to make that song actually happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lil Wayne, one of my favorites. Thank you for that too. You did uh, No Ceilings too, right? Yeah. So No Ceilings, I never know the words to anything. You can ask anybody. I fuck up the words all the time. No Ceilings was a mixtape where I knew like majority of it because it was it it, it stayed playing in my um car on the regular basis. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for that. Um, well, even. Wayne, I love that, you know, like his competitive spirit, like, you know what I'm saying? I love that this kid, like, you know, and I could still consider him that, like, he he can do it with the best of them, like, and he'll still give you that much energy and that much effort in it, like, you know, and, and I'm just like, damn, like, you know, and think about it right now, um, we came back, what you know, with his, with his funeral album and Mahogany is like the song on the album. So our magic is there. Yeah. Yeah, like, you sure. know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. just like, shit, our magic is there, yeah. you know? And it's just like you said, people want to see me and him do it. And, and that's what we're working on. Like, like just the, the the project that, you know, before I say goodnight to it or whatever, I know yeah. he got long, you know, longevity in it, but I'm like, bro, let's do this. Let's do this yeah. for our fans. Let's do it for our yes, people. Please, yes, please. We need it. Uh, Dino DeVille was your A&R at Universal. And he said once, when they first came into the business, they were very reluctant to make records with other people. They probably felt that people would steal their style or flavor, and I had to work hard to get them to open up to making records with Cameron, Puffy, Eclipse, and among among others. So my question for you is, do you think the keep your circle tight mentality helped, or are there any parts that you um, regret? Yeah, I think it helped a whole lot because this. I think I was the hip-hop head of Cash Money. They just grew up in New Orleans. Like, mm. Baby and Slim wasn't open to nothing. Nothing. When I say nothing, they was just like, I don't give a fuck about nobody. This is going to be this. We ain't doing songs with nobody. I don't want to have no meetings with nobody. You know, but I think it made that group a little bit better. Because mm-hmm. if it would have happened early on, I think it would have influenced them a lot instead of them doing them. Like, thing. because, yeah, like, Baby and them kind of, guided juvie them and you know wayne was a little bit you know like he was a little bit rebellious because he was younger you know he was the mm-hmm. dude that listened to missy he was the dude that listened to but he couldn't say it around baby them. right he could say it to me he could be like hey bro like missy timberland and blah 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 like i like that shit and he's like but don't say that shit around here because <laughs> like you you might fucking get shot for, for saying that <laughs> There was nothing, nothing for like seven years that played but Cash Money stuff mm-hmm. at Cash Money. They wasn't opening the hearing with a new sound song. I mean, what a new song sounded like, what a new artist sounded like. They they did not want to be interested in that shit. But I think it worked because it, the it was so big that it kept our real influence and our real New Orleans core. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you know, because we could have been early on, and you know been like okay now damn Julie don't sound so southern no more you know like he mm-hmm. sounds like da, 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 da. that's happened I remember, seen it happen with other artists yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah like I remember when um Jay-Z did huh you know when 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 um 
Baby was like, this dude Jay Z want to do, huh? The remix, and I was like, you don't know who the fuck Jay Z. Like, <laughs> he said this dude like, Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. And I'm like, that's a good look. Let's do yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Juvie was starting to understand how big he was. So Juvie mm-hmm. knew who Jay Z was. He was like, fucking Jay Z gonna do it. And I'm like, yeah. Then when we got the record back, you know, I was like, well, damn, just Jay, you have arrived. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm just giving it to you. Like, in hip-hop, like, some of the greatest shit in the world is Jay-Z just acknowledging that you're there. Like, you know, if you hear some, like, like if you listen to some Jay-Z shit, just to give you, like, what's incredible, and he might have referenced one of your lines, you like, yeah. Jay-Z just said that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jay-Z said in his, in his album where he said he's retiring, he said... He want to rap like Tyler Kweli. I was like, what the fuck? Hey. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, Whoa. Exactly. Yeah, so you know yeah. that, like, that's some shit you could talk like. Yeah. You at the picnic going, motherfucker, did you hear what Jay-Z just said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. on top of that, that makes you even go harder. That that's makes right. you know, like, you like you, what you're saying is important. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That was you know, 2004. Like, like, um, Kanye and uh, 50 Cent was battling, I remember. They had the little yeah. uh, record sale battle, and I remember thinking like, it made me go harder because I remember thinking, Kanye came up under me, Fifty Cent yeah. came out after me, and they bigger artists in the marketplace to me, and Jay Z saying my name. So what is it that I need to do in this year to go harder? And I did. I went harder, and I changed exactly, my career path bro. at that time. Awesome. Exactly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because my whole little thing, even with Cash Money, like you know, it was kind of coming to okay, I got to go do my own thing. Like, I got to go figure out, like, what's me? Like, you know, after leaving Cash Money. And one of the things, like, that was the pickup was, um, you know, Jay's album come out, and in the line, he's like, fresh like Manny B, chain like Antifreeze. It was a thousand folks texting me that day. Yeah. And it was like, man, did you hear? And I didn't hear it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wait. They like, that's in the intro. Wow. That's how the album start off. Right. So I was just like, well, goddamn, bro, you relevant. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, that's you. Get off of whatever whatever this bullshit is that you thinking is not mm-hmm. over with. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that, yeah. like, you know, and, 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 and I always looked at dude as big homie. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, to say, like, you can actually, and, and he made me understand something that's incredible, the power of words. The power yeah. of words, like, you know, at first, never believed in that. I was like, nah, you can't. I'm like, nah, you actually can't mm. speak it into existence. Mm. That's a good segue because you said the power of words. And you're a conscious individual and you're someone who you said you were the hip hop dude and cash money. And any, any conversation I've had with you, I've been uh, pleasantly surprised by how much you care about the culture. Um, but you've also been critical uh, recently about being associated with sort of the unbridled materialism of cash money. And that yeah. you said, even though we were the flashy dudes, we wasn't telling everybody. We we didn't want to make the whole business go flash. Like we had our lane, you know, public enemy got their lane, you know, black star got their lane, everybody got their lane. And I, as a hip hop fan from back in the days, you understand that, but you just said that you understand the power of words. You guys said, as Jasmine said, cash money taking over for the nine, nine and 2000. So yeah. y'all predicted that takeover. How do you feel about that? I mean, like all of that is like full circle to me. Like I said, mm. the power of words. Like, mm. you know, when you're younger, you just think like you're just trying to do this. You're trying to get on, but you don't understand that you could actually speak this into existence. Yeah. Like you can actually yeah. like you you have the power to sway somebody in a bad way or in a mm. good way. Like, you know, and a stand-up guy. You always got to be a stand-up guy. That's who lasts in hip-hop. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When, when, when I see people that's icons, it's not about how much money you made or where you at. It's like you're a stand-up guy to me. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes you love your heroes and hate your zeros. Mm-hmm. You right. know? Because you can't, you know, you, you can't tell me something when you don't really love this. Mm-hmm. My mom has always said this. I don't care what you do or what you write. You always better have an answer. Mm-hmm. If I wrote a song, I better have an answer for you. What was I thinking when I wrote that song? What's the premise of that song? Where it came from? Even if it's a negative song, I could say like, you know what? I was feeling that way that day. That's the Mm -hmm. way I wrote it. But if I don't have an answer for you, I just did that shit to get money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just did that shit to get money. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to move you from your circle sometimes. 
me and five people could get along, but if 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 I feel different from the way they feel, then we grew we grew kind of differently. I'm like, let well, maybe you still feel that way, bro. I don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna stop you from being my brother or stop me from being mm-hmm. your brother, but I'm thinking different from you. Yeah. And even what you just said, I kind of got criticized because I was trying to explain to this younger generation that it was the gift and the curse about bling. And I'm just like, that was our lane. We didn't want to turn hip hop into bling. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. like, that wasn't. And, and I'm like, I can't say that's how baby them felt. I'm just saying how Manny Fresh felt. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't trying to turn hip hop into, oh, now that's all we talk about is getting money and flashy chains and getting cars. I was just like, when I grew up in hip hop, we all had a lane. Like how you said it, that was yeah. our lane. That was our introduction and in, in where we fit in. Now, um, record companies and, 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 and the people, the higher ups are saying, sell that, just sell that, just sell that. Hip hop was your parent when you grew up. Yeah. Hip hop was us, your yeah. dad. It yeah. was your mom. It showed you what was good, what was bad, be a father to your child, mm-hmm. all of that shit. Yeah. Shout out to Ed OG and the Bulldogs and all that. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. All of that. We grew up with all of them songs. So we knew the gangster rap. We knew the good. We knew the bad. We had Chuck D. We had all of that. And we had the flashy. Now mm-hmm. we don't have that. Mm-hmm. We don't, you it's know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like y'all selling us on get money, mm-hmm. get money, get money, get money. And I'm just like, nah, don't take it bad that I'm telling y'all like, like, you know, kids be like, well, damn, you was a part of that. I'm like, I'm not telling you don't get money, but I'm like, it's also your job yeah. to educate us. Well, like you said, it's a gift and a curse and you spoke on the curse, but the gift is, is the legendary story of the deal that y'all struck, you know, Wendy Day and yeah. helping y'all get to Universal and 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 the split, the 80-20 split was revolutionary. Um, you know, how did that uh, feel to be someone who helped artists to understand their own value and their own worth as a collective? I mean... I knew that early on, you know, just mm-hmm. growing up in the city and seeing like sometimes like just growing up under Alan Tucson and all of these cats where it was just like the most important thing that somebody could tell you was own your music, keep your music, mm-hmm. keep your music. So, you know, my 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 thing was I always told baby them that like, bro, don't give away this. This is the, the most important thing ever. Like, you know, right. and we was already a force to be reckoned with before we took the deal. Like, you know, because we in our own backyard, we was already doing gold. Right. Before the right. world even knew us. The South had embraced us. Like, you know, so I was like, this is our niche. This is where we fit in. Like, you know, an American mm-hmm. dream is to see at that time. Yeah. This is what we didn't even understand that it was still like we was just getting off of the back of the bus. Hmm. Down South, we was just getting off the back of the bus. For some young dudes to be like, oh, y'all own this. Y'all got a couple of cars. Y'all got some property. That was big down south. Mm-hmm. That was that was huge. So right. I was like, we can't give this up because right. we're bigger than what y'all think. Like, we are the hope of a lot of kids and, yeah. and, and even where we yeah. growing up at. Like, you know, because people are like, this just don't happen. Like, where we from? Like, nobody owns this. Nobody controls this. Mm. You know, like, when record companies came to see us, they was just like, well, goddamn, they already got cars. They already got houses. They already got the, you know, like, you know, and, and what we couldn't let go of was we were some dudes who had to learn the, the, the hard way that this is real business. This is not street business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and this is our heartaches. This is our shit. This is where we all fuck up at. Yeah. I'm sorry for cursing, but it, it's necessary. <laughs> we got to stop yeah. doing homeboy business. Homeboy yes. business. Um, we gotta stop doing homeboy business. Yes. If my homeboy is my homeboy, he's my homeboy. He's not my manager. Get a real right. manager. Yes. Right. I agree. We and that's that's where we that's wait, where you, we screwing up at. Wait, you produced a you produced a record with uh, Snoop Dogg and and Sugar Free, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And Sugar Free says which says in in Hollywood is called show business in, in in the hood. It's called Hollywood is no business like show business, and the hood is no business like whole business. As we said, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like whole business as an actual hose or whole business as yeah, in yeah, like, yeah. you know, fucked up. As an actual hose. Business. Yes. Oh, okay. And we all guilty of it because we, we want to bring everybody with us. That's 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 the natural event of who we everybody are as black people. Come. We want to take, yeah, we want to take our block with us. We want to take mm-hmm. our homies and all of that. But what we, what we fail in that, let your homie be your homie. Get some mm-hmm. real people, get some real lawyers, get some real, <laughs> like you can't get your cousin 
who took some law classes. No, get you a real lawyer. <laughs> yeah. That's how you end up in those dead end 360 deals. Um, exactly. Uh, speaking of business, like a lot of other people, you left cash money because of business disputes. Is that something to charge to the game or did it hurt on some level? And how are those um, how are those relationships like now? Yeah, I mean, it hurt because we grew up as brothers. We grew mm-hmm. up and, 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 you know, and that's where I said that we couldn't leave street stuff alone. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Where I'm like, bro, we doing business right now. We're not mm-hmm. doing street trade offs. You can't get me a car and I know what's my work. You know what I'm saying? You can't buy me this and I know my worth. I'm like, nah, I'd rather my check. I'd rather exactly. like, you know, and and even right now, we, we're in a better place because, you know, I'm I'm big brother to all of them. I'm big brother in the way like I'm like, bro, I'm not going to have my kids grow up and, and hate your kids. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? When we change the world, like I'm over it. We, we done with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But my kids should know your kids and what we done. Mm hmm. And, and what's our legacy? Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But I kind of hope even what y'all doing right now, this interview heals somebody and let them know, like, I don't hate you. I don't, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't dislike you or none of that as a man or none of that. I just think that we got to do better. Yeah. Now that we know better, let's do better. Do better. Yeah, yes, indeed. Um, now, going back to the Jay-Z thing for a second, because I feel like Jay-Z is the exception to the rule in a lot of ways in which he is equally adept at the business going in as he was at the art going in. And I'll be honest with you, most of us are not like that. I'm not like that. But I guess the question I'm asking you, is it fair to say that the business, even though on the surface it looked like cash money is an army and making all this money, but in the background there was some you know, you know some, some business disputes. Is it fair to say those business disputes happened for you because maybe you were so focused on the art? Could you have become oh, yeah. Manny Fresh if you were so focused on the, the dollars and cents of it? Bro, I was buried in my drum machine and doing yeah. music. When I looked up and I saw everything that everybody else was doing, I realized that I'm just like, God damn. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And and I live and breathe hip hop. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm just like, I just wanted to do my part. I just wanted to make music. That was mm-hmm. that was what, what, what my, con- my contribution was. But at the same token, if I'm just like, well, damn, I'm in the same spot and I'm, and I'm seeing everybody else move around me. The the money wouldn't have changed me. I just mm-hmm. felt like it was fair that I deserved it. Yeah. I still would have brung a hundred to you. I would have brung a hundred to you. But it's a hard thing when you see everybody else around you, and I'm just like, well, damn, y'all just living the life, and I'm I'm mm-hmm. fixing everything. Right. Like you know what I'm saying. So, but like to this day, I'm still that way. But I, I love every little hip hop lesson and every aspect and every walk that I've done like even how you said with Jay when when it was kind of done with me um like when I left cash money Jay was the dude that reached out you know I did a deal with Def Jam but the the day he brought me there he was leaving mm. how crazy is that that was when you know his thing jumped off or whatever right. he was actually leaving so but at the same time, I reached out to Jay and I said, hey, bro, like, I need you for this and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it was that like, nah, you got to figure this out. You and you and big boy boxers now. Yeah. Like, I'm going yeah. to do me. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I've never held that against him. But I, I understand, like, what as big brother he was doing. He was like, yeah. nah, nobody can't hold your hand no more. Yeah. Yeah. You counted yeah. on these dudes. Now you got to go into your own. Now you got to grow into your own. I put you in a position where you're still getting the check. You're still there, but I'm not here. Good luck with it. Right, yeah. right, right. So yeah, I had man. a harsh reality of like, damn, like, shit, wait, you gone? And, you mm. know, so it was it was one of them situations where I'm at Def Jam. You just brung me over here. And the day you brung me over here, you're gone. You know what I'm saying? And nobody in this building don't even respect me. So it's just like, bro, you better figure this shit out. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah. at first I was salty. I was like, damn, Jay, like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. But it was necessary. It was necessary yeah. for me to, to learn to like, bro, go into your own. Take care yeah. of you. Yeah. You got you, you, you to gotta be your own business. You, you got to take care. You know, you got to cross your T's and dot your I's. Mm-hmm. Like, you yeah, know what I'm that. saying? I learned that and, as well. And that Yeah. And that was the greatest lesson that could have been taught to me, because without that, like, where would I be? Like, I would still be doing shitty deals, like with somebody Mm -hmm. else controlling your destiny and telling you what's good for you and whatever. 
Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you got to fall on your face and somebody got to, you know, tell you like, nah, I'm just here to give you the opportunity. I'm not here to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not here to big up you and I'm not going to give you no verses. None of that. Like, this is this is your spot. Figure it out. Right. 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 Um, now, you and me also have something in common. We both have albums with Yasin Bey recorded that the fans yes, want sir. that they haven't heard yet. Uh, yours is the Oh My Fucking God. Uh, is that how that's the name of it? Yeah. Yeah. Mine is uh, the Black Star album. Uh, I know the name, but I can't share the name yet. Um, now, I remember when Yasin moved to New Orleans and he fell in love with the music scene down there, particularly Preservation Hall Jazz. Um, what's the status of that project? I'm I'm this dude. I'm so loyal to you, bro, because I've had 20 people say, drop it and just do it. I'm like, bro, if Big Brother don't agree, I'm not giving it up. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's the way I feel. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, 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 I have played a few songs or whatever, but I'm, I'm it's really on leaks. him. I'm did waiting on him. And did y'all put out those leaks or they just I, leaked on their own? They leaked on their own. Yeah, it's just, it was from him yeah. sometimes sending them to people or whatever because mm. nobody got them from me. It was right. from him sending them to folks or whatever and all of that. But the thing about it is this too. Sometimes, bro, you just love a brother wisdom. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, you know, with... with, with him, bro, we just, I would just let dude talk for hours and hours. Oh, just yeah. like, just his oh, inspiration, yeah. the way he feel and all of that. So yes, I, 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 I kind of even forgot, you you notice when, when he comes around, and I'll say most, when most comes around, yeah. bro, you forget about even recording because yeah. the depth and, and, and the conversations, you just like, well, damn, we ain't do nothing, bro. You just gave us yeah. conspiracy theories and... <laughs> you appreciate the moment. It's crazy you exactly. say that. Because when I... um. You know, we, we, that's my brother, but, you know, we both had success in the music for, so for years, our relationship was predicated to me upon, you know, we got to do this album. Every time I see him, got to do this album, got to do this album. And after years of that, I was like, yo, why is it, I, why can't I just hang out with my brother and just talk to him? And when I stopped sort of going into every in interaction, like, we, I'm going to get some information about this album. When I stopped doing that, I went to South Africa to see him. I went to Spain to see him. I went to France to see him. Then, yeah. organically, the album happened. Mm. Now we got this album recorded, but it just came from me changing my energy. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And I even love this. Like, I told him, like, bro, whenever you need me, bro, I'm there. And I, and I feel mm -hmm. the same way about him. Like, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of things, like, when we get together, sometimes, like, we've done it five times when we were supposed to record and mm -hmm. this dude will just, yeah. I mean, lay on the floor and start talking. And I'm like, bro, you <laughs> yeah. just mesmerized the room. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you know, and I'm like, you, you got everybody in this room where it's just like, damn, we ain't done nothing. But, you know, we, we just went through life because we did a lot. sometimes yeah. it's that way when you haven't seen somebody in a long time. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, bro, I'm like, I need to see you most. So when when when, yeah. when this happens, we don't have these moments where we don't <laughs> even work, where we just catching up for like three days. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and just like yeah. heart of gold, bro. Like he's he, yes, he's indeed. like one of the ones, bro. Like That's you know, right. and I love the dude to debt. Like you know, so it ain't even about the music. I would love for the world to get it. I would love for them to hear it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's more of a personal thing because people have always said, "Well, how come you just didn't put it out?" I'm like, bro, I'm loyal to my people. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you know, and that's that's, right. that's what's missing right now in this. I'm like, if he don't agree, then it ain't gonna you. You ain't gonna never get it from me. It's right. got to be two two parties. It's right. gotta be, you, you know. Them leaks ain't come from me. You ain't gonna get right. it from me. Yeah, they didn't, yeah, they did not come from me. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he I was do. ping pong and sending shit to people and da 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 da. Yeah. And believe me, we have had crazy offers. The same thing I, I'm more than sure that came mm -hmm. from y'all. We didn't had crazy offers from people going like, "We'll give you this," and he'll look them square in the eye and be like, "Nah, we ain't doing that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I know my brother very the well. The hood in yes. me, yeah, the hood in me is like, bro. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could have took that. We should talk about that. We should talk about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout like, out nah, to Yasin nah, Bay. But what Yasin yeah. Bay is about three, four years ahead of everybody. So even when he says some shit, when he turns down a number to sound crazy, when he says something to sound exactly. crazy, give it three or four years, you'd be like, he he was right. He was right. Yeah. 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 I've, listen, bro, we've been in meetings where I'm like, oh, bro, come on, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dang. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> you did verses against Scott Storch and played skits that made fun of him. I know you called mm -hmm. to talk to him about it the next day, but how did you feel about the battle in retrospect? 
I mean, honestly, it was a battle. When you say the word battle, battle, <laughs> battle, <laughs> battle, yes. ten times, battle, 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 battle. <laughs> All right, so let me just give y'all some, um, just just the story of even this versus battle, the mm-hmm. super producers. I was doing this before Swiss and, and Timbaland was doing it. Oh, damn. You know, it was, yeah, yeah I really was. Beat I was battles. doing it was before doing beat, the beat battles. battles. Yeah. yeah. Like, but, but, but what A-list producers, like, you know, that, that era where we, it was me against... Um, to me against mm-hmm. just blaze, like you know what I'm saying, and all of that went in it. The skits and all of that. Right. Nobody got they they feathers ruffled that or none fun. of that. Like it seems, yeah, and it's competitive. Right. right. But this is it. This is what goes on in hip hop. Mm-hmm. Hip hop is a story of your life. Like you know, like you can't, you know, nobody gave me the memo that this is a new hip hop. <laughs> and what I'm saying is the new hip hop is you got to be politically correct. You can't say nothing about somebody and you can't da 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 da. And 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 the reason why I even called Scott was I'm like, "Hey bro, if I went too far with this, I apologize." But it was all in fun because mm-hmm. it was a beat battle. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, he could have done the same thing back. It wouldn't have ruffled my feathers. It wouldn't. Mm-hmm. But it was a lot of people who was like, "Man, you went too hard and you da da da." And I'm just like, "You bro, having fun. This is what hip hop yeah, this is what hip hop does. We we do that. We do that, you know. Yeah. And nobody gave me the memo, like I said, that it is a new politically correct hip hop that you can't say certain things. And in battles, you know, you got to be nice. Yeah, I think that um, you know, I liked watching Scott play the piano and play the keys and bring his own personality to it. But I like what you did with the skits, like that to me. If other people in a verses had did that and put more effort into it, and Scott was Scott was joking, he was he his he got caught in his feelings a little bit, but he was joking. He was like, when you when you play the first one, he was like, oh, you put a lot of you put some work into that, huh? But even though he was saying it in a jokey way, it was it was kind of accurate what he said. It's like, nah, I'm coming to this battle to battle you, and the verses up to that point had been these polite displays of. We celebrate in each other's catalog. It's not what you had already been doing. And I think that's the piece of the story that, that got missing. But I think that that making the verses more like your beat battles, because it's got us level up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like, as good as it is, as great as it is, shout out to Timberland, shout out to Swiss. They've done a great thing for the culture, for the world, especially in this pandemic. But the hip hop part of it, I we bring guests on all the time. We just, like Jasmine said, we had Clark Kent on. You know, we had Inspector Deck on the other day. And the one consistent strain for the guests to come on my show is everyone's like, look, I compete. Yes. This is a competition. I'm <laughs> yes. nice. That's all I'm you saying. Can't fuck with me. I came you can't to compete. Fuck with my I came to win, you know not just compete yeah. at that. Yeah. I came to comp- I came to win. I didn't I, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And and like I said, I love Swiss because that was the mm-hmm. era of I grew up. You know, me and him was that dude, mm-hmm. you know, in our time. Love Tim, you know, and and, and same thing. Yeah. But this is it. I'm just going to tell y'all this. I will never do another one because I don't fit in that criteria. Mm. I am competitive. I want to fuck you, over you. you. Need to get, I want but the to guests want to see that. So, we like as a fan, as watching it, we want to see the competition. Like even though they're saying it's a celebration of music, like even with Brandy and Monica, like it was some real hardcore debates when that um, versus was about to come yeah. up. Like we that's what we want to see. Well, I want to see. Well, I, you know, well, like that's Black all Thor, I'm saying. Shouts is... out. Like, I don't have no bad feelings about Scott Starch. I love him like a brother. Yeah. But if you want to be a part of hip hop, you got to you gotta open up your good and your bad. Mm-hmm. You don't have a day where you can't, you know, like, nah, y'all can't say that about me. Y'all can't. Right. This is what hip hop is. Hip hop is your good and your bad. Manny has had bad deals with cash money. People will mm-hmm. talk about him for forever. Like, I can't get hard. I can't be in my feelings because somebody said you didn't get your money. Da, 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 da. Right. Like, that's that's hip hop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if you're going to get at me, you should have done what I've done. When they told me, listen, this is how this happened. Mm-hmm. Nobody wanted to do this. They said, well, Scott will do it. And I'm like, OK. Immediately, I went do my homework. <laughs> right. I was like, like competitive like as rap. fuck. Like you look yeah, at I'm competitive. Really I'm going to be ready. Y'all said Monday, be ready Tuesday. By Tuesday, I had my skits and everything done. <laughs> I was, I, and, and what I'm trying to tell y'all is I'm, I'm very competitive in this. I was just like, bro, this is not, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and 
and I'm I'm not going to shit on him or whatever, but I'm mm-hmm. just saying, like, listen, bro, this is all in hip hop. Mm-hmm. The, the key word was battle. Mm-hmm. We came to That's, battle. We didn't. We yeah, didn't not, come to take that word seriously. Kumbaya. Yeah. <laughs> um, Black Thought. Black Thought uh, started the roots with Scott Storch, and I love Black Thought in the comments of the verses because I don't remember which one it was. Maybe it was RZA versus Primo, but everybody was like, "Yo, this is so great for the culture," and it don't matter who won. And Black Thought was in the comments like, "What the fuck y'all talking about? Y'all niggas right. better be keeping score." Right. Like, I'm keeping yeah. score. Like who won? You know what I'm saying? Like so, I appreciate that some people keep that energy because I do I do understand that that is the fuel that lights the fire that we know is hip hop is the mm-hmm. battle I mean bro I appreciate y'all for getting it because I mean for getting it because I've done a countless you know bunch of interviews where somebody was like man like but you went too hard and you know and da 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 and I'm just like no dude the key right. word is battle yeah like we we came here to battle like yeah. you know and, and, and this is what's crazy Folks made me feel that way that I had to call him the next mm. day. Oh, like, I'm yeah, like, listen, yeah. bro, if I did that, I apologize. Right. You know what I'm saying? I called the dude. And I, like, like, I was like, Scott, listen, bro, this this Manny, bro. Right. And everybody know me. I got a joking ass spirit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, bro, I You're apologize. You're the mayor and the ambassador like, I, of your town. You know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I'm. Yeah, I'm like, bro, if, 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 if listen, I didn't do this shit to destroy you or nothing like that. But I'm like, we was battling. And right. I'm like, on top of that, y'all got this idea from me. And I'm like, mm-hmm. if y'all go back right now and Google Beat Summit, we was doing this with skits and all of that. Mm-hmm. Me, Just Blaze, you know what I'm saying, DJ Toomp, KLC, and, you know, other other pr- producers. Where, you know, and, and it was like crazy crowds. But yes. we did the skits and all of that. Where you could say whatever you want to say about my mom, I could say whatever, right. but it was all in loving fun. You well, know, I didn't do this. Hope well, maybe Mariah do- Carey is writing me a letter saying, like, I can't believe you that insensitive and da-da-da-da. <laughs> and I'm like, stay in your lane. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> when you battle, it's like, I, I remember, and this actually might have been going too far, but I do roast battle with Jeff, Jeff Ross. Shout out, Jeff Ross. I'm fucking up everyone's All right, there. Jasmine's a comedian, um, so she, I, yeah. she be battling other comedians. So this is, the worst, this is the worst Jeff thing. Ross. I love his... I- I love Jeff Go Ross ahead. too. That's kind of the reason why I met Talib, actually, if you think yes. about it. We, we met and, Jeff um, Ross. Uh, so the worst thing that someone ever told me in a battle was, Jasmine, you're so broke, you can't even afford to hang at the Dollar Tree. And I think that might have been Jeez. a little too far. <laughs> but I still took it wait, 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 and went with my wait, next wait. joke. Was it, a, was it a black person who made that joke? It was a white person. And that this oh, is actually see, the first true. night I talked to Dave Chappelle <laughs> Dave was like, how you let that white girl talk to you like that? And I was like, ah, it was a battle. I couldn't do anything. But my, but, and that was her last I joke. I mean, come on, but even do roast. If you watch his roast, like, yeah. they roast the shit out of your ass. Yes. Like, right. they, they get personal up for with it. your ass. They going to say, you signed up for that. You got to yeah. be open to all of the shit that they going to say. Yeah. 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 Since Jasmine, if brought, you up, get- since Jasmine brought up uh, 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 Dave Chappelle, I, want, I definitely want to ask you, uh, your lyric just flashed in my head. I'm rich, bitch. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. fuck with you to die now. So this this is this is what Dave said. Dave <laughs> okay. said, "Ah, I fuck with you, but that's the last one. Don't take no more of my shit." <laughs> oh wait, that came afterwards, huh? <laughs> that's the last yeah. one. Yeah, that's the last so one. It was that's somewhere. a freebie. I was, I was, I was, I went I to yeah, wait, I went to Luda one Chris. of his concerts, and he said, "Listen, I fuck with you, but don't take no more of my shit. I'm gonna let you get. I'm gonna let you take the rich. I'm rich, bitch." Right. <laughs> Now, Dave Chappelle is a constant reference for, for rappers. I mean, Ludacris said I'm Rich Bitch on a record that you produced, the Down South record. Yeah. You know, but everybody mm-hmm. said it. I mean, so Donnell Rollins actually came up with that. Um, I mean, it was on the truck with, and the reparation skit. A lot of my homeboys from Brooklyn was in that skit. So shout out to all my friends and family from around the way. Um, but recently, I was on Donnell's podcast. And Donnell said, when I was saying I'm Rich Bitch, I wasn't rich. At all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I want to ask you, like, you got record on that record, you said you had a fish tank in the dashboard. You know what I'm saying? Like yes, y'all sir. said y'all had spaceships and shit. Like, 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 what's the what's the the shit from a big timers era that you really had that sound like a brag that nah, them niggas don't really have that. But what's some shit that y'all really had? It was that. I actually did have that. <laughs> like, no, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had a TV and a steering wheel, the space. I, I would challenge people to do shit. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And all of those ideas was even my ideas, like me going like, you know, fuck a Cadillac, think NASA. 
<laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you could have a Cadillac. You ain't got a space shuttle. <laughs> you got to have a National Aeronautics and Space Administration. <laughs> you got to have a goddamn NASA. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. got yeah, like you know what I'm it. saying. So I always was like, <laughs> you know, like let's let's think a little bit outside the box. Let's mm-hmm. let's let's like you, you know, like y'all yeah. y'all y'all can have Cadillac, but I got a space shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hip hop is so beautiful. Um, thank you for your time. I got one more question for you, and um, it's just for you to tell us your plans. What's next for the legend Manny Fresh? Oh, um, bro, just to enjoy and love music, bro. And 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 I'm blessed. Like, you know, this young generation has embraced me, you know, mm-hmm. in hip hop. Like, I, I, I swear, bro, I clear a song almost every other day. That's, that's mm-hmm. in my catalog. And these kids that's use love. my songs. And just to have a song, like, say, Back That Ass Up, that has lasted this long, that is the journey that every producer, everybody want to, you know, like, want to do. Like, yeah. you know, that just yeah. want to have. My my thing is this, and you you'll feel me on this. I could play Chic Good Times, love that song. I could play mm-hmm. a Grandmaster Flash song. Um, I love it like when that plays at a wedding reception, and you know, and people love it or whatever. But I'm one of those dudes that's freak with like freak freak freakily blessed yeah. that back that ass up has played so long. Yeah. Like it, I could be somewhere at a gas station and come on and everybody <laughs> eyes just come on me like, yeah. <laughs> Who is backing that ass up at a gas? Oh, in their car. Never mind. Not bar like mitzvahs, inside the gas station. All of that. Right. right. Wherever, wherever I'm at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where this song has, you know, it's just one of those songs that like, come on, like that don't happen. Like in country that happens. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, in all of these other genres, like, you know, it's up to us sometimes mm-hmm. to keep the legacy going quietly. Like, but we don't have too many rap songs that, like, they stick out. Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, they just stick out. Like, they keep on playing. Like, you know, like, if you grew up on something, you keep playing it, and you'll turn your kids on to it. But this back that ass up thing is, like, one of them songs that, you, you know, like, like you, you got kids who think it came out yesterday because yeah. it's, like, lasting like Marvin Gaye. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Where you yeah. just, like... Bob Marley legend. I'm not, and I'm not comparing it to that because mm-hmm. those are great songs. But I'm saying like Bob Marley, G, Bob Marley legend. That was like before Corona and all of this craziness. That was just one of those catalog albums that you turned it on to your kids and, mm-hmm. and, and vice, you know, and, and wherever. Yes, it was yes. one of those albums that Marvin Gaye. What's going on? You grew up on it. Your mom mm-hmm. cleaned up on it for centuries, and now you got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and this is. Kind of one of those songs where it's yeah. just passed on. Yeah. To ghetto chicks. Like, hey, ghetto girl, you got <laughs> this, this is. You don't even got it. Listen. Right. It's, it's, you don't even got to be ghetto the, to hear it now. It's the, it's the uh, what's going on for ghetto girls. That's what it is. Exactly. Means. Exactly. <laughs> As I'm sitting here listening to this, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to pass it on to my daughter. And I'm like, what kind of mother are you? But I'm, I'm excited to play That's back that thing up for her. Yeah. <laughs> A great one. We grew up on albums that, you know, like you you didn't even know this came out in the 60s or the 70s. You thought it was a, a breath of fresh air. Mm-hmm. Like if you're listening to what's going on, mm-hmm. like you just like, damn, like he this is what's happening right now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. but yeah. when somebody tell you when it came out, you just like, damn, that's when? Like, yeah. you know, so you like I look at this like to me, like this is my masterpiece of I get it is a lot ratchet, but it is a masterpiece. That's right. Yeah, greatest love song ever written. Greatest love song of all time. <laughs> we have the author of the yeah, greatest yeah. love song of all time, Manny <laughs> Fresh, in the place to be. The People's Party salutes the great legendary Manny Fresh. Thank you for your time and your energy, brother. One love. Woo! Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank that you, Manny. Was that was beautiful. Great. <laughs>